Hello Java students and welcome to technologyrediscovery.net Chunk 1, Module 5, While and For Loops, Online Screencast. We are working through this module guide linked here. It is free and available to anyone who would like to access it. And we are exploring the concept of looping in Java. The previous module covered the idea of decision making with the if statement and we're going to solve a new type of problem. We want to solve problems that involve uh, the need to avoid repeating code over and over again. So let's pull up a little strange example to think about. You'll have your, uh, there's a section here for showing you how to set up your workspace. We are inside of a package called week 5 and the name of our Java file is simple while. Let's imagine that your friend, your dear friend, asked you to be the greeter at some social engagement that they were coordinating. This friend of yours is very uptight and wants to maintain a consistent atmosphere for everyone who comes to the gathering. So you have been asked to say the phrase, Greetings, guests, enjoy your evening, exactly like that over and over again to each person that walks in the door. And you think, hmm, this is not a very engaging thing to do. It's downright intolerable. So you think, hmm, well, I'm in Java class, and I know I can have computers print things to screen, so what if I write a Java program that prints the phrase, greetings, guest, enjoy your evening, over and over again, and I just put my laptop down in the entryway, and I go do something more interesting? This is a good idea. So how would we do that? We'd make a class. Inside that class, we'd make a front door into our programs. That is the method that has the signature, public static void main, and accepts a string array that we've called args. And inside that, we will make a print line statement that calls the print line method and passes in the string, greetings, guests, enjoy your evening. That wasn't too bad, so I can just do that a couple more times. I can say, okay, greetings, guests, enjoy your evening. Exclamation point. There we go. And semicolon. If you were becoming a whiz on the keyboard, you'd say to yourself, ooh, I don't need to retype it. I can duplicate this line by holding down the control and the shift key at the same time and tapping up or down arrow. This is great. And then you start thinking, this is a three-hour event. I'm going to be typing, greetings, guests, enjoy your evening many more times than I want to. So it would be handy if I could somehow have a block of code. I know that Java works in blocks of code. What if I want a block of code and I can stick this one line in it to do the same thing and I want to tell it, hey Java, I just want you to run this one line, anything in, these, in this block, I want you to run this over and over again. Just, just keep doing it. I'll come back when I need you to stop saying greetings, guest, enjoy your evening. That's an awfully convenient thing to be able to do. It allows us to avoid typing the same thing over and over again so it's faster. More importantly, if your host comes and says, ah, actually I want you to say, greetings, friend, guest is too impersonal, you have to go through and either change each line individually or coordinate deleting the right number of lines and not deleting any unwanted uh, not making any unwanted deletions, and then recopy. You had to count how many lines there were before you, you know, you can see the point here. So duplicating code is not only inefficient, but it is error prone. We want to change, if we make a change, we want to make that change in as, as few places as we can, because every step, every component is a potential breaking point. All right. So let's get rid of our hand-typed, hand-duplicated lines, and let's come back to our problem. So Java, Run this line until I tell you to stop. That's where the while loop comes in. We can say while. Now the way that Java says that it'll do this is it will evaluate an expression. That expression is the one that we put in parentheses right after the keyword while. And if the expression evaluates to true, the while loop will execute the code inside of its blocks. As soon as it reaches the end of its block, it will retest that same expression that it used the first time. And if that expression comes out to true, the contents of its block will be run, and this will loop until the expression inside the parentheses evaluates to false. In this case, we wanted to say, greetings, guests, enjoy your evening. And this completes our use of the most straightforward, potentially problematic use of the while loop. Let's go ahead and run this program. Ooh. 
What's oh wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of printing. This loop is out of control. Let's stop it. Okay. This was a forever loop, which means as soon as the while loop block concluded with this curly brace, execution returned to the line that declared the while loop. The expression inside the parentheses was evaluated. Its value turned out to be true. And then the code inside the blocks was executed. And this went on forever until we physically told the Java Virtual Machine, hey, stop. I'm sorry, I didn't give you a graceful way out. This is uh, potentially very useful for an extremely long social engagement. But other than that, uh, we're going to explore the way that this expression that we put inside the parentheses after the keyword while usually contains variables and those variables are related to one another with some sort of comparison operator. So let's say we want the uh, contents of this while loop to run as long as a is less than b. Now it doesn't know what a is or b is so let's make it. So let's say int a is less than int a is 10 and int b is 0. So as long as a, 10, is less than b, 0, run this loop. Hmm. What's the expected output if I run this program right now? Think about it. No output. This expression that means values that are related with some sort of operator to combine them into one value. This expression evaluated to false the first time that it was encountered. So while saw this expression, it said, ah, A, I know A, A is 10. And then it saw B, it says, ah, B is a, B is a variable identifier, B is 0. And then it implements this operator, the less than operator. If the value on the left is less than the value on the right, this entire expression, A is less, is A less than B, evaluates to false and so this was skipped over. Now if we change the sign is a greater than b? This is true. It'll run this code, it'll get to the end of the while block, it'll jump back to while, it will reevaluate and a will still be 10 and b will still be 0 and we will have another infinite loop, but at least it's an infinite loop that was created by a little bit more complicated of an expression. And you can see where this goes, which is what we ideally want to have happen is some change to occur as the looping unfolds. So we could imagine that we want the value of b to slowly inch upwards, meaning with every display of this phrase, we can think about it as having completed a revolution or completed a task. And so we can say, after we have done our job, but within the while loop, so this is where our while loop ends, close while block, inside this loop, we can increment the variable b. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use my assignment operator, and I'm going to say, start on the right, find the value of b, b is 0, add 1, that becomes 1, store that value in the variable on the left, which is b, it overwrites itself. And now, let's see if we can trace this. Let's imagine we're executing the program from the start of main, I initialize the variables, I hit while, the first time through a is... 10, b is 0. This evaluates to true because b is in fact less than a. And the print line is displayed and then b changes. So when we come up for the second time through the while loop, a will still be 10 because we didn't touch a. b is now 1 because we adjusted it. It's being changed in itself. The while control structure is being impacted by variables inside its own block. So now if we run this Ooh, we hit a stop condition. Let's see if we can adjust our code so that becomes a little bit more clear. Let's imagine that we just want to verify that we are, in fact, outside of the while loop. Okay, so now if we run the program, we can see that these loops are produced and then the execution follows immediately after the closing uh, curly brace for the while loop. So we are using print line statements strategically inside of our code to uh, not only allow us to debug if there were a problem, but to see what's going on inside the Java compiler. What would be even more interesting is if we ditch our little silly example and actually put some programmatically relevant things inside the print line statements, such as value of b. And then I can take whatever that value of b is uh, before I increment it, 
and display it to the console. So you can see the first time through the loop, B's value is as expected, zero, because we haven't ever run the increment statement. This is curious. Notice that the end of this loop occurs when the value of B is 9. Where'd 10 go? Well, math people are thinking, well, it's not greater than or equal to, it's greater than. So when B is 10 after the display of this line and this statement is evaluated, 10 is 10 greater than 10? No, it's false, so it jumps down. We could, of course, add a equal sign here, and we could see that the execution does indeed go through a total of 11 times because we started counting at zero like computers do. And those are the essential components of a while loop. The following core, uh, core concepts and exercises will develop our confidence implementing while loops to solve relevant programming problems. Catch you soon!